Good afternoon. Thank you for inviting me to this webinar. Incidentally, the schedule of this webinar falls in an unholy hour. In times like this, according to a research titled the 50 study, when you are speaking or presenting before an audience, 50% of your audience will retain what you are presenting. What about the rest of the audience? What will happen to them? 20% according to research would be doing something else, texting or tinkling with a gadgets. And the remaining 30%, what happens? The remaining 30% according to research will be thinking of something else. And that thinking will be focused on something not excluding sexual fantasies. Before we start, let us break the ice by doing semantic engineering. I call this semantic engineering because uh, this is uh, forming words through letters displayed in random order. And uh, I am going to flash on the screen the jumble letters. And then I will define a word and using the letters on the screen to form your answer. You can uh, answer the questions, the definition. You can answer definitions by using one or all of the letters. But gentle reminder, use only once each letter. Use only once each letter. Are you ready? Here's the first question. It is a prefix that means between, among, or within. I'll repeat the question. It is a prefix that means between, among, or within. You will be given 10 seconds to answer the question. And your 10 seconds begin now. Okay, what is the answer? I think uh, Nel Mr. Nelson is here. Has raised uh, his hand. Is that correct? Uh, sir, I think the answer is enter. How do you spell that? I N T E R. The answer is. word enter the prefix enter okay the second question it is a large body of people united by common descent history culture or language inhabiting a particular particular country or territory i'll repeat the question it is a large body of people united by common descent, history, culture, or language, and inhabiting a particular country or territory. You have 10 seconds, and your 10 seconds start now. Okay. Any uh, answers? Any volunteer? I still uh, see the same. Mr. Nelson, she yeah, for him. Um, wait, answer, sir. Um. I think the answer is nation. 
N A T I O N. The answer is Okay, nation. Okay. Don't worry, we still have more questions. And the next question is the angular displacement required to return a revolving body or figure to its original orientation. I'll repeat the question. The angular displacement required to return a revolving body or figure to its original orientation. You have 10 seconds to answer the question and your 10 seconds begin now. Okay. Okay, so we have uh, other volunteers, please. No other volunteer? Anyone? Participants, you may raise your hand if you want to answer. I think we have answers for coming from our participants. They are sent here in the chat facility book. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, can we just read that, sir? Please. Huh? All right. So, uh, Miss Jeanette Norshaw answered rotation. R-O-T-A-T-I-O-N. The answer is rotation. Okay. The next question is a person who occupies a land or property rented from a landlord. I repeat the question. A person who occupies land or property rented from a landlord. You have 10 seconds to answer the question and your 10 seconds begin now. Okay. Right. Anyone who would volunteer? like to volunteer? Mm -hmm. okay. All right. All right. Uh, I think Dr. Neri wants to answer for Doc. Is Dr. Neri, please. Oh. Tenant. T-E-N-A-N-T. Tenant. And the answer is? Tenant. Tenant is the answer. Okay. Next question. A rod, wire, or other device used to transmit or receive radio or television signals. To repeat the question, a rod, wire, or other device used to transmit or receive radio or television signals. You have 10 seconds to answer the question and at 10 seconds begin now. Okay, time is up. Mr. Shia, can you please help me? All right. Uh, can we call on uh, Miss Danica, uh, the first person to send an yes. answer here? Right. Antena. A N T E N N A. Thank you. And the answer is Antena. Antenna is the answer. Okay. Don't worry. We still have a number of questions left. Okay. Next question. Is a trace of a bad or undesirable quality or substance? A trace of a bad or undesirable quality or substance? Your 10 seconds to answer. Begin now. Okay. 
Okay, Mr. Chia. All right. Uh, this time, can we call on uh, Ma'am Esparas? Answer is Taint, T-A-I-N-T. The answer is? T-A-I-N-T. Taint. Okay. We still have a few questions left. Don't worry. Okay, next question is a country in Africa. A country in Africa. 10 seconds to answer that. And that 10 seconds begin now. Okay, time is up. Okay. Similarly, Mr. Sia, can you please uh, identify the person who um, is the first? The first one who sent the answer here is Ms. Jelai Santiago, ma'am. I think, sir, it's Tanzania. T A N Z A N I A. What is the answer? The answer is Tanzania. Okay. Okay, next question. Again, for another 10 seconds, an occupation which deals with haberdasheries. An occupation which deals with haberdasheries. You have 10 seconds to answer, and your 10 seconds begin now. Okay, time is up. All right. Um, once again, can we call on Ms. Paris? It's Taylor, T-A-I-L-O-R. Thank you, ma'am. And the answer is Taylor. Okay. Next question, again for another 10 seconds, the question is, a person who is fanatical and uncompromising in the pursuit of his religious or political ideals. To repeat the question, a person who is fanatical and uncompromising in pursuit of his religious or political ideals. Your 10 seconds. Begin now. Time is up. All right. Uh, let's call on Ms. Mary Jane Rivera. Yes, Paul. Uh, I think the answer is uh, Zelot. Z-E-A-L-O-T. All right. Thank you, ma'am. And the answer is Zilot. Okay, next question. For another 10 seconds, the question is, it involves a process of interchange of higher education between nations, between national systems of higher education, and between institutions of higher education. Again, repeat the question. It involves a process of interchange of higher education between nations, between national systems of higher education, and between institutions of higher education. You have 10 seconds to answer the question. And your 10 seconds begin now. Okay, time's up. All right. Uh, can we call on once again uh, Ma'am Jeanette Norsho? Yes, sir. I think it's internalization. 
internationalization. I guess that's your answer, ma'am? Yes, sir. Internationalization. Uh, Stand corrected. And the answer is? Okay. Internationalization. Okay. That is internationalization, which is the focus of our discussion today. And therefore, to start our discussions and presentation, Dr. Judel Yuyap, President of Chiang Kai-shek College, Dr. Roland Chua, Vice President for Academics, Dean Maribel Chan, Director for Administrative Affairs, Dr. Aimee Neri, Dean of the School of Education, Professor Ihai Asanya Tan, Program Director for Business, and Kyat Ko, Accountancy Professor, Board of Trustees, Alumni Officers, and Members, Teaching and Non-Teaching Staff, Gadwich School, of MA Business Administration and MA in Education. Friends, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. What if one day you read in the newspapers, Philippine University graduate competes with graduates of top ranking schools in the world? namely the Massachusetts Institute of Technology. What is your feeling about the news? Perhaps your reactions may be, oh, that's baloney, that's far-fetched, or that's a mouthful of hot air. I say that is not far-fetched. With the aggressive and intensive thrust, of Pakoko for continuous quality improvement, particularly via internationalization. That dream may become a reality soon. This presentation will follow the following presentation outline. We'll start with the concept and definition of internationalization, followed by the rational for internationalization, and third, background and context of internationalization to be followed by types of internationalization. And the fifth is benefits of internationalization, the sixth, cost of internationalization, and topic number seven is integration of internationalization in the PACO cost standards. To start with, let's begin with the concept of internationalization, the definition of internationalization. The first definition says, in its broadest sense, internationalization of higher education involves the integration of international intercultural dimensions to an HCI's purposes, functions, and or delivery. Example of this is integration of internationalization and intercultural dimensions into the curriculum and services of the school. The second definition, internationalization inter involves a process of interchange of higher education between nations, between national systems of higher education and within institutions of higher education. Example of this is cross-border education. The third definition, internationalization is defined as the expansion of higher learner, learning within and beyond national borders and centers of scholarly studies. Internationalization of higher education, it's a must much broader concept than cross-border education. Example of this is franchising 
a foreign school authorizing a local school to offer its programs and its diploma and its services. To emphasize the importance of the internationalization, no less than Franklin Roosevelt has this to say on the importance of the internationalization. If civilization is to survive, we must cultivate the science of human relationships, the ability of all peoples of all kinds to live together in the same world and at peace. Allow me to share to you the story of internationalization by showing you a video presentation, a short video presentation on the story of internationalization. Here is the video. The story of internationalization. Long ago, students would travel throughout Europe to find teachers who could give them the knowledge they sought. However, this type of free movement was only available to the elite few. Most people stayed at home, learning a trade or working at family businesses. They never had the opportunity to interact with people from other backgrounds and see the world through their eyes. While there is still a divide between those who can and can't study abroad, in today's globalized world, the story of internationalization is continually unfolding. The EAIE plays an important part in its evolution. This is Sarah. She had the opportunity to study in a different country and immerse herself in a new language and culture. As more students like Sarah studied abroad, universities needed to work out the mechanics of sending and receiving international students. Issues such as general student support, language of instruction, and the ability to transfer academic credits back home prompted universities to open up lines of communication. Before long, colleagues within and across institutions were working together. They started building concrete strategies to attract international students and staff and to ensure that all students, regardless of limitations, are able to study abroad. This is Paul. Paul attended a university in his hometown and, like many of his classmates, knew that studying in another country wasn't an option for him. Universities realized that they needed to find a way to give students like Paul the same skills that those studying abroad were receiving. They worked together to design internationally focused curricula, to create opportunities for local students to interact with international students and faculty, and to find innovative ways of bringing students together via digital technology. Paul and Sarah's stories are two very different examples of internationalization in action. Universities internationalize to improve the quality of education and prepare students to succeed in the global labor market. They foster open-minded students who actively care for the world and each other. This helps to forge societies that are more tolerant and inclusive. Okay, thank you for uh, engaging me in the video. Yeah, that video uh, presents uh, why the need for internationalization or the rationale for internationalization. There are a number of reasons why we need internationalization in the Philippines, particularly in the context of integration. <clears throat> students' learning environment needs to be enhanced. Their experiences diversified and their competencies sharpened so that they can participate meaningfully in regional and labor markets. These are made possible through expanded forms of educational interfaces that widen their educational experience and mindsets. Example is the use of technology. The second reason why we need internationalization is 
an international education strategy in the Philippine higher education is warranted by the demands of integration and globalization, which the national higher education system alone cannot adequately meet. Example is developments like the ASEAN integration, the fourth industrial revolution, and 21st century skills. The third reason why international internationalization confers the following intrinsic benefits. Number one, internationalization enriches and diversifies students' learning experience so that they can be more adaptable to fast-paced changes in a global environment. It is said that change is the only thing that is constant. Next reason why internationalization is needed, it promotes and deepens awareness of social and cultural similarities and it inculcates respect for social and cultural differences. The exposure and training of students lead to cultural sensitivity. Another reason is for internationalization, it generates highly qualified graduates that can compete in the national, regional, and international labor markets, therefore producing competent students and graduates. The next reason why international internationalization is needed, it, it serves as a platform for government and HCIs to participate in the setting of international standards that can help in developing program and curriculum design with an international orientation. This is an opportunity for government and HEIs to participate in formulating standards. Internationalization also provides an opportunity for developing and strengthening academic linkages for collaborative work and exchanges like research and other types of partnerships. Internationalization also promotes academic and knowledge transfers that can enhance the quality of Philippine higher education institutions over the long term and therefore continuous improvement is assured. International, internationalization also provides an opportunity for strengthening diplomatic and international economic relations. And that could deepen awareness of the interdependence of nations and economic benefits, numerous economic benefits. Finally, internationalization provides an opportunity to for knowledge and technology transfer, sharing and broadening of perspectives and experiences of faculty, academic staff, and students through institutional visits, research, joint researches, collaborative academic and cultural acti activities, and sharing of academic and cultural resources. In the words of Rigoberta Menchu, peace cannot exist without justice. Justice cannot exist without fairness. Fairness cannot exist without development. And development cannot exist without democracy. Democracy cannot exist without respect for the identity and worth of cultures and peoples. That brings us to the background and context of internationalization. International initiatives in higher education have been driven in the past mainly, mainly by academic, social, cultural, and political factors. 
the concept of internationalization is distinguished from international education by at least for at least three reasons. Number one, the comprehend comprehensiveness of the framework. And number two, inclusion of different forms, providers and products of cross-border education, apart from internationalization initiatives at home. And number three, incorporate incorporation of international dimensions into the curriculum and the learning process. Internationalization has increasingly become a key feature of higher education in the global era in light of the freer flow of students and workers within and across regional economies and the necessity of international linkages in the generation of productive knowledge, innovation, and technology. Like the ASEAN integration opens the floodgates of business, economics, and political opportunities. Against the backdrop of the ASEAN economic co community, the country's national plans, the imperatives of labor and student mobility, as well as a more vigorous academic exchange, internationalization is integral to the country's development. So it has become an imperative. The internationalization policy for Philippine higher education has the primary goal of improvement of the quality of education that would translate into the development of a competitive human resource capital that can adapt to shifting demands in the global and regional environment to support and sustain the country's economic growth. Internationalization is also envisaged to stimulate innovation and technolog technological advancement resulting from a wider interaction of knowledge networks. Internationalization in higher education contributes likewise to building informed and critical citizenry, more inclusive and participative society, and improvement of lives through positive impact, impact on a social and economic landscape. And finally, higher education in quality improvements resulting from internationalization is manifested through increasing number of graduates who possess employable skills. In both domestic and international labor markets, global perspectives and active mindsets. Over the long term, the strategy is to be able to continuously upgrade and sustain the quality of Philippine higher education institutions through academic and knowledge transfer outcomes that to result in improved quality assurance, accreditation status, and educational standards comparable with international standards. There are many types of internationalization. Let me present to you these types of internationalization. Uh, otherwise, these are called varieties or variations of internationalization. But in general, they are called types of internationalization. The first type of internationalization is home based or campus based internationalization. This takes place through collaborative activities and events, networking, partnerships, other forms of linkages with foreign higher education institutions often enabled by information technology without the learner or the education service provider moving out of their respective national territories. The second type is <clears throat> the activities under home-based internationalization include on curriculum and program 
providing international content and dimensions in the curriculum, learning teaching programs, as well as in the learning materials. On the teaching and learning process, involvement of return study abroad students, use of international scholars and teachers, integration of international and intercultural materials, and virtual student mobility or distance learning. Still, another one is extracurricular activities. The establishment of student clubs and organizations linked to those in other countries, holding of inter intercultural campus events, as well as establishing connections with cultural and ethnic groups. Online with cultural and ethnic groups. This is engagement with local cultural and ethnic groups through internship, placement, and applied research. Also, the involvement of members of local cultural and ethnic groups in teaching, learning, research, and other extracurricular activities. And on research and scholarly activities, this refers to the establishment of area and theme centers and joint research projects with international content, the holding of international conferences, seminars and workshops, and establishment of linkages with international research partners. Still, another types of internationalization is cross-border education. What is meant by cross-border education? This can involve mobility of students, faculty and research, programs and institutions. Based on UNESCO 2005 guidelines, activities under cross-border education include student and faculty research mobility. This includes, number one, movement of students to study in a foreign country. Number two, faculty exchanges between institutions located in different countries. Or the third is research, fellowship, collaboration involving, involving visits of scholars to countries of collaborating institutions. And fourth, foreign language study. And finally, the fifth is building international perspectives through conferences and networks involving travel of learners, faculty, or researchers. For program mobility, program mobility includes training programs, academic franchising, program articulation programs, joint double awards. Whereas for institutional mobility, this consists of commercial presence of foreign universities in another country in the form of branch campuses, offshore institutions, or international institutions. For transnational education, Another type of internationalization. Transnational education includes all types of higher education, study programs, or sets of courses of study, or educational services, including those of distance education, in which the learners are located in a country different from the one where the awarding institution is based. On the other hand, Academic mobility refers to a period of study, teaching and or research in a country other than a student's or academic staff member's country of residence, the mother country. This includes internships abroad, service learning, on the job trainings, semester abroad, immersions, cultural exchanges, and other similar exchange activities. 
academic cooperation agreement refers to a cooperative agreement either bilateral or multilateral that signifies a partnership between two or more higher education institutions for the implementation of collaborative teaching and learning activities, including distance learning, joint research, transfer of technology, delivery of academic services, and the exchange of art and culture and or other collaborative academic activities. For academic franchising, as another type of internationalization is the process whereby a higher education or a franchiser from a certain country grants another institution or a franchisee in another country the right to provide the franchisers programs qualifications in the franchise's host country irrespective of the student's provenance from the first the second or any other country Program articulation is another type of internationalization, which refers to inter-institutional arrangements whereby two or more institutions agree to define jointly a study program in terms of study credits and credits pursuing their studies in one institution have their credits recognized by the other in order to continue their studies. Example of this may be dual degrees or joint, joint programs or co-diplomation. This may or may not lead to joint or double degrees. Example, computer schools partnering, partnership with uh, companies, with computer companies. Whereas a branch campus is a campus established by higher education institution from one country in a, another country or host country to offer its own educational programs, qualifications, irrespective of the student's provenance. Now, let's not talk of the benefits of internationalization, perhaps it would be good to view another video uh, material where the benefit internationalization can be clearly illustrated. It's high time to increase your international students on campus. Here are some compelling reasons why. Social and cultural activity economic gains, trade and research, global linkages, closing skills gaps. It's an increasingly global and interconnected world we are living in. Student mobility is at an all-time high where there are plenty of opportunities to explore virtually every field of study and institution in one's country of choice. Students can greatly benefit from studying abroad through the knowledge, skill set, language, and job prospects they can get from their foreign education. But it is barely discussed how colleges and universities and entire economies stand to gain a lot from international students. International students bring social and cultural diversity to campuses worldwide. They help enrich the learning environment as well as help domestic students develop globally relevant skills. International students contribute to the economy as they spend on tuition, food and clothing, transportation, and other living expenses over the course of their studies. In 2016, they contributed a significant $39.4 billion to the U.S. economy. In the UK, during the same period, they added some 13.8 billion pounds in gross value to the gross domestic product. International students become informal ambassadors for their host countries and universities once they are back home. This strengthens trade, research, as well as diplomatic links. As alumni, they recommend their host institutions to others seeking to study abroad. International graduates build global links for their host colleges and universities. They either pursue further studies or collaborate with institutions abroad for research. 
International students help address critical skills gaps and labor shortages. They potentially fill professional level jobs in high value sectors, which translates to additional tax and workforce contributions. That's the end of the video, which uh, shows the benefits of internationalization. As if not satisfied, J. William Fulbright reinforces this by his wisdom when he said that educational exchange can turn nations into people, contributing as no other form of communication can to the humanizing of international relations. Now, to discuss the uh, details of the benefits of the internationalization, let us now proceed to the, uh, the details of the topic. Uh, internationalization is a means to improve the quality of education. That's the first benefit of internationalization. The second benefit is internationalization leads to knowledge translation and acquisition. And next benefit, internationalization leads to mobilization of talent in support of global research. And still another benefit, Internationalization leads to enhancement of the curriculum with international content, international content and inter intercultural content. And internationalization sustains growing science and technology and scholarship through dynamic exchanges and building social and economic capacity in developing developed countries gain the main financial benefits. Still another benefit of internationalization is improved economic quality. It also facilitates internationally oriented students and staff. It promotes internationalization and national citizenship for students and staff from underdeveloped countries. International, internationalization also promotes for developed countries revenue generation and brain gain, while diversifying and enhancing the learning environment for the benefit of domestic students. Internationalization also mobilize aptitude and abilities in favor of transfer of knowledge, advanced policies, and global research for enhancing investment and measuring impact. Internationalization also facilitates the potential to change lives of international students as it helps in producing graduates who are internationally knowledgeable and cross culturally sensitive. Internationalization also leads to student mobility by allowing them to transfer to a different environment where they can understand the connections between the local government in which they live and the global environment. Internationalization also facilitates engendering the international characteristics fostered in students. Internationalization promotes international mindedness and open mindedness, second language competence, flexibility of thinking, tolerance, and respect for others. Internationalization or also promotes ethical commitment to allow students to examine their implicit and explicit beliefs and develop a sense of responsibility and civic engagement. From the point of view of business, these are the benefits of internationalization. Number one, 
increase customer and revenues. With each new market, businesses can pave the way for new business growth and growth in revenues. The second is internationalization improves risk management. One of the advantages of internationalization is market diversification. Becoming less dependent on a single market can help business avoid risk in its core market. Still, another benefit is internationalization increase competitiveness. It increases the brand awareness of the business where competitors have not yet been entered. And finally, internationalization leads to cost savings and access new technologies. When you when a business enters a new market, the business is exposed to opportunities to benefit from foreign investment that may not exist in the home country. The $64 million question is, what is the cost of internationalization? So the next topic of discussion is the cost of internationalization. The first is commercial profit. This is profit in terms of profit to the owners of the schools. Second is academic colonization, which is brought about by the West colonizing the developing countries. Next is cost is difficulty in ensuring quality education because of the presence of, or the existence of fake schools or providers, then quality education is not assured. Next is there are severe risks and challenges and controversies as part of this multifaceted and growing phenomenon as part of internationalization. And finally, internationalization primarily favors universities in the West while doing little to promote long-term advantages for those in developing countries or nations. Here is a clear description of the cost of internationalization, which can be gleaned from the statement of Peter Deacon when he said that internationalization, economic activity, and its major vehicle, the transnational corporation, can be regarded simply as being part of the normal expansive process of capitalist development. At this point, allow me to share to you the integration of internationalization into the PACO, PACO COAS standards. How did we integrate internationalization into the PACO COAS standards? Uh, several years back, uh, already, Pakoko paid attention to uh, internationalization as its, its thrust in several general assemblies. And uh, eventually, uh, it has made a clear uh, focus in terms of integration of internationalization into the Pakoko standards. But before that, allow me also to introduce to you the quality assurance framework of PACOCOA. The standards of PACOCOA essentially come from CHED and uh, the standards of CHED which is contained in the CMOs is enhanced uh, to form the uh, what is now called the PACOCOA standards. These PACOCOA standards are embedded into the 10 areas of survey which is composed of philosophy and objectives, faculty, instruction, research, laboratories, libraries, student services, social orientation and community involvement, fiscal plan and facilities, and finally, organization and administration. The uh, area on philosophy and objectives is the core, uh, uh, the core of 
of uh, the eight areas of the, of the nine areas of survey and uh, because the philosophy and objectives bear uh, on all the nine areas of survey now the 10 areas of survey are sensitive to global standards and asian standards uh, they are sensitive in the sense that we are influenced by asian standards and global standards so therefore the ASEAN and global standards are incorporated into the standards of Papua to make it uh, uh, comparative, comparable with international standards. And so in the journey of the programs applying for accreditation, in the journey, in the accreditation journey of the programs from candidate to level one, to level two, level three, and level four, they comply with the standards of Papua and also indirectly comply with ASEAN and global standards. We can see the specifics by looking at the 10 areas of survey as to how the internationalization was integrated into the Papua standards. For philosophy and objectives, the first sub area is internationalization agenda what is what are the standards under internationalization agenda the accreditation minimum standards are the vision and vision articulate explicitly internationalization as a strategy what does this mean this means that the institution or the school should integrate internationalization as a strategy in its vision and mission and even in its objectives and deployed from the institutional to the program level for faculty in connection with faculty mobility as a sub area the accreditation minimum standards is there is provision for international mobility for faculty in the program this is carried through research, faculty exchange, and other uh, faculty collaborative activities. For instruction, area three, the sub area alignment to qualifications reference framework. The accreditation minimum standards under that is the program is aligned with an appropriate international qualifications reference framework so aside from the fact that we uh, connect we um, uh, uh, relate our standards with the philippine qualification framework they're also compared with the asian reference qualifications framework for instruction under variety and variation of internationalization the standards are the institution uses digital technology and other modalities to facilitate internationalization of the program and still under instruction sub area english language provision what is the accreditation accreditation minimum standards under that two years after the pandemic the following percentage of students should have D1 in the CFR. We use the common European framework of reference as metric in measuring the communication competence of students. So for the first year after the pandemic, it is expected that 10% of students will have D1 in the common European framework of reference. For the second year, 30%, it is expected 30% of students will, uh, will have a score of B1 in the common European framework of reference. For the third year, it is expected that 50% of students will have a B1 in the CFR. And fourth year, after the pandemic, it is expected that 70% of students will have a B1 
in the CFR. And finally, after the fifth year of the pandemic, it is expected that 90% of the students will have B1 in the common European framework of reference. For uh, another accreditation minimum standards is the following percentage of faculty should have C1. This time, it's a level higher than B1. And two years after the pandemic, it's expected that for the first year, 40% uh, of the faculty should have a Z1 in the CFR or in the Common European Framework of Reference. For the second year after the pandemic, it is expected that 50% of the faculty will have C1 in the CFR. And after fourth year of the pandemic, 90% is expected that 90% of the faculty will have a C1 in the CFR. And finally, in the fifth year after the pandemic, it is expected that 100% of the faculty should have C1 in the common European framework of reference. For research, under the sub-area International Collaborative Research Conference and Publication, the standards under that is academic accreditation minimum standards. The institutional research and innovation plan include international collaboration. Research agenda should integrate the plan, and it should be noted that the plan, the research plan, should be deployed uh, from the institutional up to the college, uh, down to the college level. For student services under student mobility, there is provision. There is provision for international mobility for students in the program, like student exchange, OJT, international OJT, and internship programs. For sub area on variety and variation of internationalization, the accreditation minimum standards under that is the institution provides opportunities for international exposure of students. In the international exposure may take the form of OJD, internship, exposure, and immersion of students. And for area 10, internet or organization administration under internationalization agenda, the accreditation minimum standards under that is there is an articulated internationalization agenda or roadmap for the program, which should be articulated from the institutional down to the program levels. And under the sub area on institutional linkages, the accreditation minimum standards is there is a focal person or unit in which or which supervises the linkages towards internationalization. And not only the linkages, but internationalization itself. And so we get back to uh, Filipino graduate of a university, which is able to compete with uh, a graduate of the Massachusetts Institute of Technology. Uh, after undergoing uh, quality instruction because of internationalization component of accreditation, it is believed that students will be able to compete with students of other Filipino students will be able to compete with graduates of other big universities and quality universities abroad. And if only to emphasize the imperative of holistic mind, hearts, and souls. Maulala Yawasafsai says, I truly believe 
the only way we can create global peace is through not only educating our minds, but our hearts and our souls. Thank you very much for listening and God bless you all. All right.